welcome again, everybody. I'm Dr. Andrea Murray, and I'm the IS representative for South Africa. The International Eco-Psychology Society was formerly known as the European Eco-Psychology Society. And this society recognizes that there's a symbiotic relationship between psychology and ecology. Eco-psychology expresses this relationship by acknowledging that the root of the environmental crisis is in fact a psychological one. As the current pandemic has demonstrated, what we do to nature, we also do to ourselves. As humans continue to engrave our destructive lives on the natural environment, zoonosis is likely to become more prevalent. So COVID-19 is a zoonotic disease that normally exists in animals, but it gets transferred to humans when we eat them, we destroy their natural habitat and wild spaces. Zoonotic diseases are diseases that demonstrate the, the destructive relationship humans have with nature and animals. Because of the pandemic we're in and this relationship that people have with nature, IES decided to launch a series of public webinars to explore the current pandemic from a range of eco-psychological perspectives. If you would like to learn more, you can go to our website, ies.bio, and there you'll see all our different uh, webinars that we've had and that we will have in the future. And you can also become a member through the website or get in contact with any of the speakers um, you see here tonight. So for tonight, we've got Machala Danon, who will be speaking first. She's a psychologist, a counseling supervisor, and a journalist. She's been involved in eco-psychology in Italy since 1996. She completed her training in California, Holland, and Spain with some of the most important figures of eco-psychology, like Fritjof Capra, Joanna Macy, and Molly Young-Brown. In 2004, Machala founded EcoPsych, the Italian School of Eco-Psychology in Osnago, Lecco. And this school combines personal awareness and environmental ethics. It is an IES school that offers courses for professionals in the field of eco-psychology. And she also lectures at the University of Aosta, and she's now republishing the second edition of one of her main books called Eco-Psychology, How to Develop a New Ecological Awareness. And this book will be launched now in June. So have a look for that. It's so pertinent for the times we are in. Marcella is also the co-founder of IES. And the title of her talk is We Are Nature. After Marcella, I'll then invite Cleo, who will present to us her presentation. Cleo Apostolaki, who is a psychologist, psychotherapist, eco-psychologist, and she's also a dolphin therapist. She's the representative for IES in Greece. She's also a previous president of IES, just like Marcella. And in Greece, she established the Hellenic Society of Eco-Psychology for Mental and Integrated Health. She promotes eco-psychology in Greece as a professional and a trainer. And the title of her talk this evening will be Connecting Ourselves with Our Inner and Wider Web. So if everybody's ready, I would like to invite Machala to share her screen. Thank you. Thank you very much, Andrea, for introduc introduction to, to both of us, to the three of us. Thank you, Flor, for providing all this fantastic media and Cleo for being with us. And thank you to all of you from several countries, many different countries of, of the world. I, I will start, I will start from the arrival point. I will start from the end. The message I want to bring in this webinar is that we are nature. That's not intuitive right now. It was, it has been, and it will be. But in this moment of our social and cultural evolution, it's a kind of consciousness that has been kind of lost although is well alive within us. Uh, Wilson talks about biophilia. Um, Rozak, the, 
in ecopsychology talks about um, ecological unconscious. Somewhere within ourselves, we do know that we are nature. But probably we had to forget it in order to, um, to find a new way to discover this, our deeper reality. In transpersonal psychology, there is an expression that say, that talks about the skin encapsulated ego. We don't finish where our skins finish. So the, the, the journey we have, the journey that eco-psychology prepare us to live for ourselves or prepare us to be guide, guide to be friend, uh, to be someone inside, um, for others to discover that we are much more than what we think to be, much more as individual, much more as a human being. The human species, for psychology, it's not just uh, not not the the, uh, the lord of this land, not the parasite of this land, but part, integral part, uh, human species, like all the other species before us, were part of this planet. And we discover, we felt this strong connection with nature. I guess many of us in all the countries where this uh, coronavirus surprised us and brought us to this crisis, but the crisis is also an opportunity where uh, we, are, we stayed closed in our houses for two months without the possibility to go to nature. What, what I'm showing you here, it's a Piazza del Duomo in Milan. It's the center of the town. I born in Milan, although now I don't live anymore in this big town. I needed to go and live to a smaller, greener town. But I, in any moment, in no moment of the day and of the night, this square is so empty. It's a meeting point. Milan, it's an old Celtic town, has a round map, like a mandala, with a center. And then all the, all the town is built around this center. And this center is Piazza del Duomo and every time is full of people. So this image for me, it's the symbol of how weird has been what we lived in this, uh, in these months and talking with all the people around and many of the people I have around is people who uh, it's very connected to nature and to psychology. We suffered, we did suffer a lot by missing this connection. And maybe many people felt that actually we need nature so much. It's part of our health, of our rhythm of life. We need it to feel good, to feel well. And this uh, awareness is growing, is growing a lot. It's an interesting coincidence. I'm here with Cleo and Cleo invited me last year to an international conference in Athens, uh, forest, a urban forest for humanity. So there is a strong movement recognizing that now that more than half of the humanity will be living in town in, in the next 40 years, if we are not able, all of us, to go to nature, we have to bring nature to our town, to the place where we live. But I brought to this image because uh, Many times who lives in a town, who lives in a big town, have the feeling to be disconnected by nature. I born and I raised up in Milan, that's a big town. And many of the people who come studying uh, eco-psychology come from Milan, and in Milan they suffer a lot for being away from nature. What most of us felt just for two months is, who lives in big town usually, if it is sensible toward nature, they feel it all the time. So it's very important for me to bring this message that even if we live in a town, we are not cut apart from nature. First of all, nature is much more present 
in our, even in our urban environment than what we think. But if we just pay a little bit attention, we will realize little plants, animals, birds, little mammals, uh, a lot of life in town. Actually, the, the concrete of our town is just a very, very, very skin, uh, subtle skin over this wonderful, huge green and blue planet. So the, the feeling of connection with the nature, more than being connected to the fact of being in the middle of the uh, tropical forest or in the middle of the town, it's an inner feeling. What we want to develop as ecopsychologists, as ecotuner, ecotuner it's a new world that raise up in the, within the International Ecopsychology Society to define all people, all professionals who have been trained in ecopsychology and use ecopsychology in their activity, although they're not psychologists. An ecopsychologist ecopsycholo can define himself ecopsychologist. Uh, but uh, what about a teacher? What about um, a trekking guide, a yoga teacher, an architect who are trained in ecopsychology? They can call themselves ecotuner, helping to get tuned to nature helping to find this tuning within. We have a very big power on getting deeper in touch with our inner nature. And as deeper we go in touch with ourselves, the deeper we can get in touch with the outer nature. Actually, ecopsychology uh, continue the tradition of humanistic psychology and transpersonal psychology that uh, wants to underline the big freedom we do have as uh, individuals in relationship to the choices we do, to the actions we do, but most of all to the attitudes we decide to have towards what happened. And this has been the defy during this pandemic. Uh, who do I want to be in this event? I have the freedom to decide to live in fear. I'm showing you here uh, this diagram that it's in Italy but has his translation either in English, either in Spanish, that I received from Casa della Pace, House of Peace. Um, a place in Italy that works in all over the world also in the volunteer actions. And they have these three opportunities. They say to people, you have these three opportunities to live in free, uh, to live in learning, to live in growing. So living in, in, um, in fear, sorry, living in fear means uh, when I'm accumulating food, toilet paper, medicines that I don't need. Because I fear that uh, there is a lost atmosphere, a missing atmosphere. And I'm very vulnerable to emotions. And like, like a plant in the wind, I let other people's emotions catch me. And I don't realize that I become also um, creators of storms of emotions in other in the moment i decide to share a message that brings answer to uncertitude and anger or a message that brings courage hope creativities so when i'm in fear i don't i'm not using the freedom consciously that i do have I think that I depend on the outer world. I feel, I feel myself as a victim of what's happening outside. But it's just a, a phase, it's just a step, it's just a, a moment, it's just a step of consciousness. When I go farther, I can decide to use this opportunity to learn. 
and I start to decide which kind of messages I want to read, which kind of messages I will not even open, which one I want to share and which one I will not share. I start to accept what I can't control, but I start taking care and taking in my hand what I do, what I, I can control and I can act on. I, I start to use the opportunities of learning new things, of checking information, of recognizing all the efforts that everyone is doing. Although I don't like what is happening, but being aware that each one is trying to do his best is just being more open and open to what it can be. But there is also another step that's possible to, to follow, that's possible to, to live in, and it's the growing. So I can decide not only to accept in a better way, in a better spirit, but I can decide to act and to change things. I can decide to discover new things. We all discover how to use this Zoom, go to meeting, go to webinar, Skype, even people who never used them before. We are all stressed now with all these opportunities to meet online, but it's also great, it's magic, it's delightful to be able to be with you from different countries in the world and to be able to, to listen and to exchange ideas and vision. And uh, in this growing state, I can learn that I can be more empathic, more kind with myself. And in this way, I have also the right atmosphere to be kind with others. I, I, I feed gratitude because I realized how important it is to be next to people I like, to, be, to have the opportunity to do the movement, the sport, the activity I like, maybe I'm not as free as before, but maybe this 10% freedom I have, I, I appreciate even much more. I explore my uh, resilience. I explore, this is a magic word of this experience we all lived. I explore my flexibility. I explore my learning opportunities. There is people who use this period to clean house, to learn new things, to finish the e-learning courses they had in the School of Eco-Psychology, to explore the creativity talent. In Italy, we had an explosion of creativity and we had musics and videos and film and flash mobs in, in the streets where all people gave appointment at six in the afternoon and did, and did music. So we lived also very emo um, good moments that will stay in our memory for all our lives. And it's up to us. It's just up to us which of these three levels I prefer to uh, live in. And uh, going toward the end, I want to bring you um, a sentence from um, an Italian writer. You can find it in, in different languages. And actually, maybe I will let you read it in your own language. And I will read it in Italian, because maybe I can give, give better the sense. English is not my language, as you can listen i just try to do my best but in i uh, yes we we learn to be also tolerant with the uh, not perfect perfection on using languages since um, being able to speak a little bit of other languages help us to get in touch anyway with one with the other l'unica persona che mi abbia davvero insegnato qualcosa un vecchio che si chiamava darrell Diceva sempre che ci sono tre tipi di uomini, quelli che vivono davanti al mare, quelli che si spingono dentro il mare 
e quelli che dal mare riescono a tornare vivi. E diceva, vedrai la sorpresa quando scoprirai quali sono i più felici. Alessandro Baricco, Oceano Mare. I said that these three ways of living the sea, it's a little bit like the three levels we saw before. So living in front of the sea, just separate from what is happening. A fearful limit I put between me and life. When I go on learning, I get able to enter in the sea. But when I go on growing, I let myself enter completely in the sea, in this high and in this low. And I discover that I can survive. But this moment of dialogue, of struggle, of dance with the sea, with life, with what is happening, gives me a kind of joy that any other things couldn't give to me. So I think I arrive to my time. And Andrea, I leave you, I give you back. Thank you, Marcella. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Um, we'll keep our questions for the end, Marcella. Thank you, thank you. Um, I'm going to hand over to Cleo now for, for her presentation. Cleo, are you ready? Yes, I am. Thank you, Andrea. Uh, thank you, Marcella. Thank you, Flor. Uh, well, I'm going to continue the wonderful presentation of Marcella. Uh, with uh, the way we can connect ourselves with our inner and wider web. Uh, of course, we are part of a web. Now we are part of a web. We discuss, we can uh, present something, we can hear something. Uh, we're connected uh, through the internet. What about uh, the web that uh, we are in in our everyday life and uh, includes uh, people, our family, our uh, working environment, our friends, uh, the flora and fauna around? How does uh, this affect us? as personalities, as everyday life, uh, in everything. Have we ever wondered? So, now we say that we have a crisis, we're facing a crisis. Uh, we think that this is new because we have, uh, everything has changed, our routine changed. Uh, new things have happened uh, in all countries. We are having the lockdown, uh, nothing uh, worked uh, or still is not working, and uh, we are all panicked. We are fear, insecurity, uh, but do we face a crisis right now? And what is the crisis after all? First of all, this is not the only crisis that uh, we experience globally. Uh, of course, this is a universal situation with, uh, with the virus. But a uh, long time ago, we were facing a situation, a global situation, with the climate change. This is our life. But nobody was forced to change something. Uh, nobody ever thought that uh, we might change our everyday life because of this. Uh, we don't really uh, pay attention to the, uh, to the weather, uh, to how the atmosphere has changed, uh, the temperature has changed. We are already in a global crisis. This is not the crisis only. But the difference is that we were forced now to change things. We, have, we were forced to change our everyday life. We were forced to leave nature to breathe. Um, we need to take immediate action. We are under an immediate risk. Uh, this is a, a, a situation that has to do with us. Uh, our neighborhood country, our family, our next door neighbor, it's very close to us and we have to change everything. And we were 
forced to do that. Well, is that actually uh, human nature like that? For example, why uh, people make the big changes in their life when they are towards uh, a health issue, uh, a big change, like a big uh, disaster in their life, and then they're forced to change, and then their their life is changing. This is very characteristic uh, for uh, people who have been uh, uh, face with, have uh, faced a uh, health situation like uh, cancer or. Uh, something that had to do with uh, serious change in their bodies, that they saw that they didn't like their life anymore. And when they overcome this crisis, uh, this health issue, they said that, you know, my life has changed and I have changed many things in my life and I cannot believe how I used to uh, live before that. But it is, this is human nature. We have to face something very serious in front of us to make the decision to change. But human nature is also thinking, knowledge, experience of others. Uh, we can be more, uh, more quick in that because until we make action towards changing things, we have lost a lot of energy, we have lost a lot of time in Earth. We have many consequences with our past life. And so we come now and many people say, wow, I spend more time with my family. I spend more time uh, with, uh, with my friends chatting that I used, to, um, I, I used to call them once in a month. And now I can do that uh, nearly every week. Uh, I discovered my new talents and uh, yes, uh, after the first uh, shock of fear and insecure, uh, insecure, then uh, other things have come that were uh, much more easier to cope with and uh, more interesting. Uh, so why not using human nature as, um, from the perspective that we can do something using our knowledge and our experience? and not changing things when we are just bored or when we are addicted or we, were, uh, or we are uh, pressed. Why don't we change then things when we are healthy, when we are happy? Why don't we change then? Well, that's the question mark and uh, it's, uh, it's something that we have to think about. Uh, so, um, a crisis is something that has to do with the imbalance of, thing, of things. Uh, so, when we have a mental health issue, then, then things are happening to our, um, our body and uh, our psyche and tell us that, yes, you know, you have to change things because uh, you get the messages. When we have a panic attack, we get the message of something's wrong. Uh, but until we, uh, we are at, uh, at the very big crisis, we don't see what's wrong. We just have a way of life that we are running. We are running and we don't stay and watch. We don't stay and see what is going on. We don't see our web. So what does nature give to us uh, from that perspective? First of all, it helps us focus on the present. Nothing goes faster and slower in nature. It's just what is happening now. What is happening now, it's what uh, we can um, see and uh, not uh, just imagine or uh, cry for the past. We are in the present, we focus on the present. People in their everyday life, they make plans for the future. Um, they want to have another life and they, uh, as, lo as, as long as, as soon as, and not focus on what they are uh, facing at, uh, at the present time. And nature gives us this knowledge and makes focus on that. Uh, also to come in touch with our emotions. We don't have something to, um, uh, to give us a, ba a barrier in our feelings when we come in touch with nature. When we uh, have our pet, for example, or when we make uh, a little bit of gardening and we are in connection with uh, our flora and fauna, uh, we are uh, open and uh, we can express ourselves without being criticized, without being judged. 
without uh, feeling fear or insecure. Also, reawakening our innate knowledge. You know, it's, it's very interesting that uh, all creatures in nature uh, can face dangerous situations. And they know how they can camouflage, how can uh, they deal with them. It's an innate knowledge. Uh, men, human, uh, it's like uh, they, uh, you know, it's, it's a danger outside. It's a virus, it's something. And uh, we say that, oh, we are prisoners, we lose our freedom. No, we don't lose our freedom. We just protect ourselves and our environment for a danger, from danger. It's what everything in nature does. The trees do that, the, the, the animals do that. Uh, so it's something natural to protect ourselves. We don't lose, uh, because we don't have our everyday routine, we're not prisoners, we don't lose our freedom. It's something that we have as innate knowledge. Uh, but uh, the way we are thinking, in the Western thinking situations, it's like we are trapped in, stand, in certain standards that uh, we think that through these standards only uh, we can live or we can be happy. So it's important to open to this knowledge and see the situations that we're facing as something that uh, we can deal with them because it's our innate nature. Reawake our senses, um, understand the world with our senses again and not lock our senses only to vision or uh, uh, and give an understand and have an understanding of the world only through the isolation of one sense. Another thing that nature gives us is the chance to lose control. Uh, we have connected our survival with the control. We have to control everything. We have to control our lives. We have to control ourselves. We have to control our future. We have to control our past, maybe, and, uh, uh, and have the illusion that we can change it. But nature gives us this, this very important lesson that we can uh, cope with the unknown. A very good exercise uh, to do for, uh, for this uh, um, for this part is uh, maybe you can get some seeds of different flowers or vegetables, does not matter, but without knowing what seeds are and put them in, um, in soil, in your balconies, in your garden, inside your house and see what will happen, what will come out of it without knowing colors, without knowing uh, what do you have uh, put in the seeds and uh, try to see how you will feel with this. Because um, control is something that we have been uh, raised with. Nature does not need that. It trusts uh, itself. And also give us nature um, a very good opportunity to connect. To connect with what? With our web. Our inner web. We have an inner web. And we have an outer web. As we are home, and uh, therefore we say about the indoors, but nature indoors does not have with, with going for a trip in, um, uh, in nature uh, um, that is far away from us. Our existence depends on what is the web, the web inside our body, the viruses that live there, uh, the microbioma, uh, the, the blood, whatever lives in our body, it's our inner web, uh, literally and metaphorically. And uh, what is in, is in our outer web constitutes our life. When we run, when we make, make targets and we run to reach them, uh, we don't see what is around us and we don't know ourselves like that. How will we learn ourselves through the web? First of all, see what you have in the house, what nature elements are in your house. Uh, make a small walk around your neighborhood and see what's going on around the neighborhood. How many trees you have, how many birds you hear singing. Uh, what are your neighbors? Because nature is not only 
um, the animals, the insects, and uh, the flowers and trees are also the humans that are around us. So I, I will give you an example of how important is learning our uh, inner and outer web. Because by learning that, we can cope with everything that has to do with us. Because the, the insecurity comes from the unknown. When something is known, we can deal with it. The unknown is that what grows fears and panic and shock and no solutions at the end. So imagine that uh, you go uh, in a, uh, not a grocery store, how is, uh, where, you, where they buy plants and flowers. I don't remember the English word right now. Uh, but uh, imagine that you go uh, and you want to buy something, you want to buy a plant, for example. Uh, you just don't get the plant that you like, that might be your first, that, oh, I, I would like to have um, a nice uh, a nice lily. And uh, you go to this uh, store, shop, and uh, you ask for a lily. And uh, then the person there asks, okay, where, um, how will you grow lily? Where are you going to put this plant? Uh, is uh, the wind uh, north, east? Uh, where is your balcony? What kind of soil will you put there? Does it need uh, a certain soil? Uh, does it need extra uh, vitamins? Um, and uh, what other the things are you growing around? Because if you grow around things, uh, other plants uh, that uh, they have big roots, they might uh, struggle the lily. So you just come out and uh, say, I just wanted to buy a lily. What are for this information? Why are these important? What kind of insect do I have in my environment? It's also important because this is the web the, of the plant. This will be uh, the place where the plant will grow. So we have to know where we play, uh, when we put this plant because what is around the plant makes a big difference. And what is important is that now that we have been isolated in our small webs, in our small microcosmos, this is a chance to see what is the web around us because this will tell us who we are and what we can do in order to grow. Because if we have other plants with big roots, they will strangle us. If we have insects that they attack us, we have to, um, uh, to make a, an immune system against these insects insects. When the soil is not uh, dry enough or wet enough, then this will change things in our growth. So we have diminished uh, the, what we say about the web of uh, our inner. We say we're isolated in our house, we're isolated in our neighborhood. Yes, but this is what constitutes our beings. And it's very important to know it because then we will feel secure. We will uh, make changes in what we don't, uh, what does not function for us. And afterwards, we go to find the bigger web. But the small web and the inner and outer web of our um, area is very, very important. Because we look very much alike what is the planet. We have all the elements. We, we function like a planet, and this is important to know how we function, and then how the planet functions, and we see this connection, and we can learn from this connection, and we can give um, big attention to the knowledge that nature itself, our innate nature, uh, makes us um, understand. So these are for me. Thank you very much. Um, here you see a picture of uh, our um, conference in Crete, in Greece, when we are in the, um, uh, the peak of uh, the biggest mountain here in Crete. And uh, this is something that all the time inspires me uh, to, to go higher and higher in my soul, not in my career. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Cleo. Wow. Wonderful. Thank you so much.
Um, I would like to now open it up to our attendees. If they've got any questions for Cleo and Marcella, you can just type it into the chat where we welcomed each other um, earlier. And we will just pose the questions to Marcella and Cleo. While we wait for some questions, I was wondering, Marcella and Cleo, how do we help people connect with their inner nature? Like, uh, Cleo, like you were saying, the, the organisms in our body, how do we connect with them? First of all, recognize them. Uh, generally, we feel like uh, our body, when something's wrong in our body, that we are sick, that we're, everything is against us, that we don't feel. Uh, people don't know how they, their body reacts in anything. Maybe we have some allergies and we see our, uh, for example, our uh, skin make a reaction. And we, can, uh, we don't have time to see that. And we don't know what, what has created, what has uh, made this reaction. And uh, because we never notice what we do in everyday life, we don't notice what we uh, come in touch with. And it's just there and we just ignore it because we don't have time or our, our, our skin is bad. And we don't come uh, in relationship to that and understand, okay, what was in my skin? What do I have in my environment, in my room that can give me allergy? And uh, this, uh, th this will lead us to take care of ourselves. And this is the same what happens also to the planet. We don't see and we don't know. When we see and we know, we come in connection. And what we can do as eco-tuners, it's uh, help people to listen to ourselves. Because our body talks, uh, but we don't listen to our body until he, sh he shouts. <laughs> but if we start to learn uh, to listen to all the small uh, messages, I eat something, mm, my body didn't like it. Or I did some moment, movement, wow, I really felt great. If we, if we become sensible to all these messages that our body does give us, we can take on our hands the, a big um, slice of power about our health. Because the best uh, doctor is ourselves. We know now that no, not everyone lives in the same way, a food, uh, um, uh, a pollution, a virus, because each organism, it's, a, it's, a, it's an ecosystem that's different. So the first doctor that can really understand what's good for me, what's not good for me, it's ourselves. And as Cleo told, the most we become sensible and attentive to our body, that's the most uh, solid part of our small planet I, the same sensibility we can bring it outward toward the other and outer world. And so we learn to listen to what is happening outside because signals are there and we don't see them until they shout. Oh, wonderful. We've got a question from Anne. She's asking, we have been obliged to pause. How do you think this pause will be long enough to become aware of our reconnection with nature? I just uh, think that uh, we don't have a, I think we cannot say about the time limit because this is the first time something like that is happening. Um, we are, when we are posing, we just, uh, it's, it's a chance to see uh, what this pose uh, give us the chance to see. Um, the thing is not how long this can be to reconnect, but how, how uh, we are ready to reconnect, how open we are to reconnect with, uh, with nature. I would not say that it's a, uh, it's, um, it's something that has to do with time, but something to have with the quality that we give and the openness that we have towards, uh, towards nature. 
and it's uh, up to um, everybody's uh, need for, uh, for connection. does not happen to everybody. It does not mean that people pose and it's, it's a lightning that gives uh, all the blessings and uh, open to nature. Uh, this goes step by step. This is a chance the, to, to realize that. How long it will take to, uh, to reconnect uh, is something that uh, I don't think uh, I have an answer on that. Yes, I just will add to this direction that, again, it depends on each person, of the level of consciousness of each person, how much uh, someone that really leaves this idea and it's ready, maybe in two days decide to change, to realize. I, I heard people who say they will not go back to their work because once they stopped, you just realized there was too stressed and it's possible to live in another way. But other people just couldn't wait the moment to start again running as before. So it depends really to each point in his life is each person. Wonderful, thank you. Um, so the next question is, what are the drivers that led people to reconnect with nature? I think that it is a big question for me now, and that's from Taney Breson. Um, Marcella, do you want to start answering that one? I'll read it again. What are the yes, drivers? I read it. What are, uh -huh, okay, good. Um, that can be drivers at different drivers at different level. The first one can be just health. Um, environmental psychology has uh, 40 years, 50 years now of studies, of measuring, of electrodes, anal analysis of the blood. And we know now that, for example, doing sport in nature gives more advantage, more physical advantage than doing the same physical exercise just in the gym that uh, um, studies from Ulrich, from Frumkin, people that in hospital uh, live their, the, the days after an intervention and have the opportunity to, to walk in a, in, a, in a therapeutic garden, in a place where there are trees, get better uh, quicker in, in, in a shorter time. So this can be one drive, just physically, Many doctors now in Scotland, for example, in the Shetland Islands, it started this year a program where doctors don't give only medicine, but for a small problems, they uh, prescribe nature, walk in nature. So this is a direction that we are starting now to, to live. Mm -hmm. Of course, other drivers can be emotions because walking, uh, going in nature, it implies movement. And when I move physically, this helps to move emotionally also. There is a kind of getting great, let, let emotions flow. So, uh, but that can be also drive from the mental point of view. Um, oh, the, the theory of uh, recovery of attention in the humanist, in the, um, environmental psychology it has been demonstrated that people recover quickly their left hemisphere attention going in nature more more quickly than just stopping or doing something else so once that people understand this it becomes obvious that also in companies in offices having a green corner can be a good opportunity to help people to recover quickly from the mental fatigue. But then there can be no also spiritual drive because we can live very deep, profound experience in nature and this can be also drive for someone. Mm, amazing. We've got another question uh, from Silvio. I can see around me that people, despite the serious moment, remain asleep and often revolting instead of making this inner movement. Will they wake up, Cleo? Well, the answer is simple. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> 
We'll see. It's something that uh, I think that we all wait for that. Uh, how things uh, might change after that. Uh, it's something that we don't know because uh, the addiction to consumerism, the addiction to the Western uh, way of life is big. So uh, if we see uh, all these planets as patients, we never know how, they are, uh, how many they will recover. From that and how many they will see uh, that uh, these uh, changes uh, because you know what's happened also with uh, uh, with many things uh, that uh, that have happened to the planet in the past also in the past uh, things have changed in one direction other things remain the same others went worse so it's a big challenge now to see what will happen it's very early to see the results of this situation and how people, even if they see the changes, if they see, for example, that uh, uh, nature after the pause of the human activity has uh, a bit uh, has been a bit of uh, had a bit of recovery, and they all make pictures and uh, all in the social media. Oh, we see now we have dolphins, we have fishes, we have uh, uh, flopona flora, and they're excited. I don't know how this will last because people uh, uh, forget, and their their the addiction to the Western life and to the past culture, <laughs> if we can say that, uh, is very strong. So let's wait and see. That's how I see. It. Mm -hmm. Marcella, what do you think? I agree completely with what Cleo says. Completely. <laughs> Nothing more to add. <laughs> Wonderful. We have a comment here from Flor Vasquez. In my experience, practicing mindfulness has helped me to connect with my breathing senses and body, to go down from my head to my body and to connect with nature outside. Uh, wonderful. Thank you, Floor. And then we've got Elena. I think that one big challenge in the future will, to, will be bringing nature to people living in big towns. What I discovered in these two months is that I can bring nature even in my apartment. And this gives me relief and small daily moments of joy. Mm. Um, what, what do you think, uh, Marcella? Is, is that something that works? Do we call that eco-psychology if you're sitting in an apartment with a flower? Yes, absolutely yes. Because it's, what, it's an inner connection that we have to build and then discover that nature is all around. We are just protecting ourselves, as Cleo was saying before. Staying in our house, we are not cut apart from the rest of the world. Like, like, like the... Like the bird in his nest is not cut apart from the tree. And if we become able to uh, feel the emotion of being in front of uh, uh, a message of beauty, how a plant, how a flower, uh, and, and if we are able to feel the joy, the peace, that from just being next to this flower in our house, this is all an advantage for us. So it's very important for us as a cutuna, eco-psychologists, to, to, to push people to realize they are nature and they are in nature. And as much as they can, as much as they want, to bring nature in their house as plants, as stones, as books, as images, as animals, if we are ready to. Absolutely, yes. Wonderful, thank you. Cleo, did you want to add anything to that? No, I'm totally covered by Marcella. <laughs> <laughs> I think that uh, one, one nice thing that somebody can do, uh, it's because uh, we take things for granted. We can just record what we have, you know, what we have in our house and what meaning does this have to us. So this is a, this might be a way also of uh, realize what we have and what we need. Mm, absolutely. Um, I don't think there's any more questions, um, and we're about just an hour into the webinar. If I can maybe ask just a final question: um, the field of eco psychology. 
what can we as eco-psychologies, eco-tuners, uh, psychotherapists that work in nature or just the general public, what can we learn from this pandemic in terms of how we move forward with the field of eco-psychology? Mm. Yes. I think that it gives us um, a chance to see a person not as, uh, uh, as a unique finger in our psychotherapy and the, innate, the, the, the environment of his family, but see a person as, uh, as, I, I, as I said, as part of a web. And when this web cracks, then uh, there's nothing we can uh, do to help a person because what we, a big realization, I think, uh, this period is that uh, the, the, it's the interconnectedness between us. If we want to stay healthy, we have to take care of each other. If we want to stay uh, powerful, we have to take care of each other. This is a big realization that I think that uh, uh, all kinds of therapists, general public, everybody, um, is, is important uh, to see and uh, understand it also as, because nature already does that. And we have the innate knowledge to do that, but we have forgotten that because uh, we uh, are a function uh, nowadays as, um, as isolated figures in this planet. Marcela? Yeah, again, <laughs> I agree. I agree absolutely. <laughs> And I just realized that a lot of people, it's arriving to eco-psychology in this pandemic. Uh, I've mm -hmm. written to a lot, and mostly there were psychologists and psychotherapists that decided, one was a psychologist from, psychotherapist from South Italy that lives in the North. She went to visit the family in the South and she stayed blocked there because she couldn't move. And she started to see that his house and the family with the garden of his father in the backyard say, I want to work here. This is the way I want to live and this is the way I want to work. And so I think that this having been cut apart from being free to go to nature help us to realize and to appreciate how much is important. And I think that many professionals are starting to look in Google, nature, psychology, growing. And um, I think we, we, we will have a lot of work and we have a we have a big uh, duty also, because since all of us are working in this field from 10, 15, 20 years, and so we can, we can help people to, to catch up quickly all the information, because eco-psychology, it's not a discipline where you have to learn A, B, C, D, okay, you know. No, we, we, we enter in some ideas and the push is, for every one of us to do our own synthesis, to find our own way, each one of us with my previous work, with what I like, with what I know, and to find my way to create uh, eco-tuning activities, reconnection activities. So there is a lot of needs for this and a lot of fields where this mm, vision, more than discipline, it's a vision can be uh, applied. Absolutely. We've got a comment from Alessandra. It gives us hope that the new Europe biodiversity strategy for 2030 is named bringing nature back into our life. Wow, that is amazing. And then we've got another comment from Floor. I realize this lockdown has been and is an invitation to connect first with inner nature and with nature from home. Absolutely wonderful. Okay, I don't think there's any more questions. Um, Marcella, Cleo, is there anything else you just want to add before we close the session? I just want to thank, uh, thank everybody uh, who attended this uh, webinar. We have a series of webinar and your attendance is very important for us because uh, uh, we can share a lot of things even if we talk more than you do. It's a way of connecting ourselves with uh, 
uh, people worldwide and uh, thank you for your time and being here. Thank you. I just also wanted to say thank you, Clea. Thank you, Marcella. You are amazing women in eco-psychology and that's why you've been the president, both of you, um, of IES leadership um, in this beautiful, beautiful place that we are, eco-psychology. And then Floor, you can't see Floor, but I wanted to say thank you so much, Floor, for organizing everything in the background and inviting people and managing the webinar so well. That is absolutely fantastic. But before you leave, Marcella, we'll just show you quickly where you can register for our next webinars. And if there's any topics that you're interested for our panel to discuss, you're welcome to send us an email through our website and tell us what topics you would like to hear about next. Thank you, Marcella. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you, Andrea, for your being a wonderful host and facilitating us and helping us. It's, we are new to Zoom and to public webinars, so we, it has been a very important for us to be able to, be, to meet with all of you. In order to facilitate um, the link to any all the other webinars, because each webinar has a different link, who is registered, who registered to our newsletter received the link, but who is new for um, our website, you go in the website of IES that is in four languages. So the, all, the whole website is uh, replicated in English, Spanish, Italian, and Portuguese. If you go in the home page, just scroll a little bit down, and you see this huge, I couldn't do it smaller, that's the only way it came up. Yes, webinar, and here you have the link that go to the last edition of the newsletter that Julianne did. Julianne is our wonderful artist of the association. And going down, this is the webinar we already had, and Soon we are going to have the recording in our, in our YouTube channel. This is the webinar we have today. We are going to have a webinar in Spanish, June the 2nd, with uh, uh, Claudio, represented from Chile, Belen from the School of Spain, Marco, represented from Brazil. Then we're going to have, uh, uh, two weeks later, Flor, here so you can see her also. Again, Marco and... Teresita, representing from Uruguay, and then associates, who wants to associate to yes, there is another series of webinars that are more specific, going more deeper in, in um, our professional themes. And we are going to have an Eclan Society webinar for associates in June, Cleo and me again, and then Anne from Belgium and Valentina from Switzerland. And again, in June, Andrea and Anne and Julianne, so South Africa, Belgium, United States, we are the end of June. And we will finish this series with, uh, in July, again with Teresita, with Marian from Colombia, and again, Mexico. And since we are in the newsletter, congratulations to Andrea for her doctorate. Doctorate that just finished, so we are really, we are really happy and proud to have her uh, with us in the association. So thank you again to everyone. And so let's meet www.yes.bio, go in the, in the website. You can also explore how to get associate if you like. And let's meet in our next webinars. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, Ciao, 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 ciao.